Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this coffee with the Ameritai Association Executive Committee. Um, I love that uh, musical interlude. Um, so thank you, uh, Haley or Susana, whoever put that up. It was delightful. Um, welcome, and uh, we'll get started. Uh, uh, by way of introduction, uh, I will start uh, with telling you a bit about myself. Uh, I'm Stephen Adler, uh, this year's president of the Emeriti Association. And uh, I'll tell you, you a little bit about what I've done and what the Emeriti Association uh, does. And then we can uh, move on to meet some of the other members of the executive committee and leave time for questions from uh, curious uh, uh, onlookers who've joined us today. Um, again, Stephen Adler, um, this year is president. Uh, my term is one year and I'll soon be passing the hat and the baton to my distinguished colleague and this year's vice president, Alan McCutcheon, who will become next year's president. Um, I joined the campus uh, as a faculty member in 1987 uh, in the Department of Theater and Dance, where I was a professor for 29 years, um, teaching a variety of courses ranging from the history of musical theater to film classes, to directing classes, to stage management classes. And uh, I spent the last 12 of those 29 years <clears throat> as provost of Earl Warren College, uh, one of our, at the time, six, now seven, and soon to be eight excuse me, undergraduate colleges. Uh, as I say, I retired in 2016 mm -hmm. and joined uh, the Emeriti Association right away. Um, I was asked to uh, serve on the executive committee in 2019, which I did for a year, and then was somehow catapulted into the stratosphere uh, and uh, uh, was asked to serve as vice president and then as president. Um, for the last two years. So um, what is the Emeriti Association? What is the executive committee? Well, obviously the Emeriti Association is open to all uh, Emeriti and we work, uh, and current faculty too can join. There's no need to have been retired to join the Emeriti Association. We work uh, as close partners with our uh, colleagues in the Retirement Association, which largely comprises uh, retirees who are not uh, on faculty appointments, but I'm a member of both associations, many of us are. Um, and it's just a lovely way to support each other and to support the activities. And there are myriad activities uh, uh, hosted by both organizations. Um, the executive committee uh, specifically uh, is kind of the, the brain trust for the uh, Emeriti Association. We oversee uh, the decision-making that uh, goes into planning and scheduling and programming. Of course, all of this is done in consultation with our uh, esteemed and uh, indefatigable leader of the Retirement Resource Center, Suzanne Chaffee, um, who, without whom we would be nothing. Um, the great thing about uh, the Emeriti Association writ large and the uh, executive committee uh, is that it brings together faculty members from across the, the campus spectrum. So I'm from the general campus. Alan McCutcheon, who will be president next year, is from uh, the med school. We have uh, people from Scripps Oceanography, um, people from uh, Rady Business, people from uh, global policy and strategy. It, it really uh, draws people from all over, which is wonderful because then we get to spend time with colleagues from different backgrounds, different orientations, different disciplines. And it's really a terrific way for us all to uh, cross pollinate uh, even in our retirement. And as I think we would all say, we are all still very active in our retirements. 
Um, it's very cost effective to join. If you go to the Emeritus Association website, you can find the, the costs. It's as low as $30 for an individual membership for one year. Of course, you can join for a lifetime and save a lot of money, $300 for an individual for a lifetime. And um, you can then participate in a wide range of activities from monthly lecture series that Alan McCutcheon will talk about uh, uh, brief uh, in, in a moment um, to um, participating in our Chancellor's Scholars Program, a Maritime Mentor Program. My friend and colleague Ann Craig will talk about that uh, in a minute or two. Uh, well, maybe in, in about 10 minutes. Um, because I have actually found uh, mentoring students in this program to be one of the greatest post-retirement uh, benefits that I've had from UCSD. Um, I've enjoyed it tremendously. Um, lastly, we have uh, the Chronicles, which is the quarterly Emeriti Association newsletter um, that's currently edited by our distinguished colleague, uh, Sandy Lakoff, uh, Emeritus Professor from Political Science. And it's a compendium of articles and essays and humor pieces about our own work, about the campus. And um, it's a wonderful place for us to uh, strut our stuff a little bit with articles across the spectrum. Uh, I wrote an article about the history of La Jolla Playhouse, which was uh, a lot of fun for me to do and I hope fun for people to read. So um, I really have enjoyed the time that I've spent on the executive committee and in leadership. Um, I really respect and admire and appreciate my colleagues and you're going to hear from some of them now. So um, thank you for your time and please uh, join me in welcoming um, Professor Emeritus, Dr. Alan McCutcheon, who was this year's vice president and soon to be president. Alan? Thank you, Stephen. Um, I came to uh, UCSD in 1976 from um, a medical school experience in, at Yale and, and a residency there in internal medicine. Spent three years um, becoming an infectious disease specialist and then uh, joined the faculty and have been on the faculty ever since, retiring in uh, 2008. Um, I uh, joined the Emeriti Association uh, in uh, about 2012, I believe, at uh, the uh, invitation of uh, Roger Sprague, who uh, uh, suggested that I might enjoy being an Emeriti mentor, and I certainly have and have done so ever since. Um, I, my career at UCSD was in uh, infectious disease and particularly uh, focus on HIV. I uh, went to the University of London for a master's degree in epidemiology uh, in the early 80s and came back to see the first case of uh, HIV in San Diego. And I was so impressed with this uh, disease, which of course we had not ever seen before. And it's uh, just startling and disturbing effects on young, healthy men that uh, I, I decided it was time to try to <clears throat> uh, use some of my experience and my recent degree in epidemiology to study it and have been involved ever since. And I've been particularly uh, happy with the fact that at uh, one point in the mid 80s, uh, uh, about the time we were learning what the, the cause was, what the virus was, and so on, uh, we began to uh, recognize that there were a lot of neurological complications. And I teamed up with Igor Grant and Hamp Atkinson in psychiatry, and we started a uh, program that's still going on here that focuses on what HIV does to the brain. And uh, you can imagine with all that experience and, and background knowledge, we are now trying to uh, work on uh, the COVID uh, brain fog problem that occurs in people who've recovered or maybe never had a very serious uh, acute illness with COVID, but end up uh, with uh, big problems of uh, thinking and, and it disturbs their ability to work and 
you and so on. So um, th th that has been a, a wonderful part of my career and I've enjoyed it, enjoyed it very much. Now, as um, the <clears throat> vice president, I uh, have uh, lined up and uh, <clears throat> we've uh, completed uh, most of our Emeriti lectures, but I thought if I could share the screen, uh, I would just show you a brief uh, listing of those. And let's see, here we are. Hmm. I'm sharing and I just need to find what I wanted up. Sorry about that. Let's see. Well, I seem to have uh, misplaced it somehow. Um, I just put it in. You, you cut off, uh, Suzanne. Suzanne said that she just put the link for the lecture series in the chat. So okay, the list great. is available there. There, good, okay. Well, I'll stop sharing. Uh, I just wonder where that has disappeared to. Um, in any event, um, we've had a, a really nice series of lectures uh, that uh, was led off um, by Steve Smith, uh, who discussed uh, the problem of uh, uh, the, the law and, and falsifications and so on in the law, followed by um, Caitlin O'Connell, who was uh, a very uh, uh, well, had it, did a well illustrated talk on the uh, issue of how animals uh, pursue uh, rituals around each other as signaling and uh, focus mainly on elephants. She spent a lot of time in Africa and uh, had previously uh, described the fact that elephants can feel vibrations in the ground of other elephants uh, from several kilometers away. And it's a way that they uh, space themselves and, and keep from ending up at water holes competing and so on, and, and quite an interesting uh, insight. So uh, we, we then uh, had Joel uh, Dimsdale, who uh, talked to us about Dark Persuasion, his uh, new book on uh, the issue of brainwashing, uh, which he interestingly uh, traced back to Pavlov and in Russia and so on. So it was, uh, it's quite an, uh, a fine uh, exploration of that whole um, rather dark area. Um, we had uh, in early uh, January, Joel Dimsdale, who uh, was uh, uh, talking, excuse me, uh, Joel Wertheim, we had two Joels in a row, uh, who, who talked to us about the interesting problems of tracing the origins of the COVID epidemic uh, in China and the work that he's done on, on trying to clarify when it uh, appeared and where and so on using um, the genetics of various isolates of uh, the COVID virus that he could uh, come up with. Uh, and um, let's see, in February, uh, I believe we had, help me uh, Suzanne, if you've got this up, or I'll go to the chat and bring it up. Here we go. Well, Alan, I think in the interest of time, um, maybe you could just give a, uh, a forward look at what we're expecting in, uh, in a month or in a few weeks from one of our colleagues. Sure. Um, we have um, uh, Peter Cowie, who is um, uh, former dean of the School of, uh, uh, of uh, Pacific Relations and, and uh, International Studies, and uh, now renamed. And he has um, 
decided to talk to us about the issues of cybersecurity and the, the Ukrainian war and so on. So should be quite timely and interesting. And um, just to say in, in a few days ago, we had Barbara Walter who uh, discussed her new book on civil wars and uh, how they start and how we can stop them. So it's, um, it's been, I think, a good series uh, and has uh, reflected the wide variety of uh, expertise and, and uh, insight we have in the faculty. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alan. Um, and it's been a great series this year, um, absolutely. And we look forward to uh, whatever uh, the incoming vice president, Peter Gurevich, has in store for next year. Um, I would now like to uh, pass the uh, cyber mic over to uh, my friend, Jean Bernard Minster, uh, who is the chair of the uh, awards committee from the Emeriti Association. Bernard? Hi, uh, I, my name is Jean Bernard Minster. Uh, I uh, I'm a geophysicist and uh, came to uh, UCSD at Scripps in 1987 after spending some time in the 70s at Caltech, where I graduated from, and uh, some time in the private sector. The first company I worked for all of a sudden got interested in Star Wars, which was not my bag. Then uh, they got interested in uh, disposal of uh, chemical weapons, which is even less my bag. So at some point I decided I want to see students again and given the chance of being a visiting professor and then a professor at uh, UCSD was uh, very good. I was there, I served for 31 years. I served uh, at UCSD as chair more than once of the Committee on Planning and Budget of the, of the Senate. I also served as uh, chair of the division, which meant that I spent a lot of time in Oakland. Uh, now I'm glad I don't have to go to Oakland so often. Uh, I joined the Emeriti Association almost immediately upon retirement in 2018. And uh, following the advice of uh, Steve uh, a minute ago, I uh, joined for a lifetime uh, membership. Uh, having done that, uh, I was uh, caught by a sudden uh, manipulation, I would say. No, I'm trying to find a nice name for this. Uh, Jay Jacoby was the chair of the awards committee. And cleverly, he managed to get himself nominated for an award. And I was a member of the awards committee. I was asked to become chair of the awards committee. And now I'm stuck with this. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I'm chair, the other members are, of course, uh, Joe Watson and uh, Roger Spag. Uh, and the main awards that we're looking at are the Dixon Award. And uh, of course, Jake received the Dixon Award this year. And also uh, Barbara Sorry, uh, both you know, outstanding uh, uh, candidates. It was very easy. Uh, we also, every year, uh, award or nominate people for the Panunzio Award. Uh, or those awards have long descriptions, detailed descriptions on the uh, uh, web page, you know, on the awards page. And then finally, we have a say in the Revelle Medal, which is one of the most prestigious awards that uh, UCSD uh, can, uh, award, can uh, con confer. Um, I like, I like being chair of the awards committee. Uh, you know, I keep thinking that uh, oh, well, maybe there's a way, oh, forget it. Anyway, uh, I enjoyed uh, meeting with the, all my colleagues on the executive committee. Uh, it's, uh, as described earlier, uh, a very diverse group. And uh, it's actually 
more enjoyable than service on the academic senate, which is also a diverse group, of course. That's it. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, Bernard. And it was just gentle, <laughs> gentle coaxing. It wasn't really arm twisting. Um, and, but thank you for take, taking over, uh, taking the reins. Um, and now uh, I'd like to introduce uh, an old pal and colleague, um, yeah. Professor Harry Powell. Uh, Professor Powell uh, has been very active for many years in the Emeriti Association leadership, but he's also this year's chair of QCIA, which is the Council of UC Emeriti Associations. It's the umbrella organization for all the EAs from all the campuses. And it's a timely uh, uh, moment for us because we just came out of two days of system-wide QCIA and KUKRA, the Retirement Association umbrella uh, organization. Uh, two days of uh, cyber meetings uh, that ended yesterday afternoon. So would you like to take a couple of minutes, Harry, and tell us sure. about QCIA, please? Yeah, um, I, I would, uh, I'm happy to say that working uh, on QCIA has been another very rewarding experience, uh, which I owe to uh, the whole practice and culture of shared governance. And um, coming, we had a very good meeting, I thought, uh, the last couple of days. And one of the things that uh, is worth mentioning um, is the, um, uh, the, the one of the things that's particularly worth mentioning is the new Kusia website uh, for which credit goes to Joel Dimsdale and um, a very effective and skillful person who he hired to do this job. It all worked out very nicely inside Kusia's budget. And he's given us something now that I think you will all, if you haven't already, uh, looked at it, you're going to like it very, very much. And so um, uh, the, uh, the, the next thing I'd like to mention is that um, at the meeting and after the meeting, there was a lot of discussion among the campuses. How do we get to know each other better? How do we get to interact more? How do we get to hear about the things that are happening on each member's campus? And so for me, that was a lovely opening because I was able to say that um, uh, lectures like the wonderful one that was given a couple of days ago are being collected in the YouTube archive uh, that uh, Suzanne has led that drive uh, so effectively. And I believe now there are over a hundred films uh, or over a hundred uh, documentary records um, of presentations. And people appreciated that this is exactly what we um, have been telling the president and the highly placed uh, leadership that um, faculty, continue, faculty and staff, um, staff and faculty both contribute uh, in their uh, time as retirees to voluntary work that truly benefits uh, the university. And uh, things such as mentoring students, uh, producing talks and other content, as well as doing research and uh, contributing, these are all very, very important things. So what we would like to make sure, and uh, one of the other presentations that we had yesterday was from Professor Emerita Jessica Utz from UC Irvine. She's a statistician and um, she has taken over the responsibility of the triennial report on the activities of um, uh, members of the uh, faculty. Now, uh, keep in mind, there's another triennial report which was produced more like a year ago uh, from the staff. Both reports are beautiful documents of the wide range of contributions that people are making. So I came away from yesterday's meeting with an ever more clear goal, and that is to do whatever we can to facilitate interaction between members of these organizations um, on each other's campuses. Now, 
up until uh, the Zoom uh, uh, culture and up until the pandemic, we were all meeting uh, every six months on another person's campus. And I can honestly say um, I uh, never enjoyed anything more than all of those get togethers that we had over dinner and visiting uh, you know, the Arboretum at Davis, visiting the Nature Preserve at Santa Barbara, uh, visiting uh, the Art Museum at Berkeley, uh, and of course our own UCSD, which Suzanne so ably organized the visits uh, to um, different facilities um, that we treasure and take pride in on our own campus. So um, I would say that uh, I probably haven't covered everything that happened yesterday. And by the way, I'm taking this uh, Zoom from my phone. I came up to campus and uh, in the back of my mind, I had that we're going to get together at 12. I foolishly thought that the coffee was real, not symbolic. And so um, uh, I'm, I'm sitting outside the faculty club, minus your presence. Uh, but uh, if there are any, any questions that I can take about the Emeriti Association, I'd be delighted to do that. And I'm also very glad to have had the honor to lead this organization. We just are in the process of turning over the leadership of it to uh, Joanne Berkman, who's a library uh, specialist at uh, UC David, a wonderful, wonderful person, a very able leader, and it'll be a joy to work with her in the next two years of uh, Kusia's life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Harry. Um, now, please join me in welcoming a, a very dear friend, uh, a former colleague, uh, provost, and my provost mentor, really, when I joined the ranks of provosts, Professor Emerita of Political Science and Provost Emerita Ann Craig, to talk about the Chancellor Scholars Program and Emerita Mentor Program. Good afternoon, everybody. It's nice to see some faces I haven't seen in a long time, like Christine, which I haven't uh, seen for ages, uh, and many of you as familiar faces. Uh, to introduce myself, as Stephen said, I am Anne Craig. I came to campus, same year Peter Gorovich did, in 1979-80, uh, uh, to be in the Department of Political Science, where my work focused on, my research focused on social movements in Mexico, primarily. And I did that for 14 years. And then for the next 15 and a half years, I served as provost of Eleanor Roosevelt College um, before taking early retirement, which I didn't enjoy nearly as much as I thought I was going to. So I came back on recall to active duty in a couple of other positions. Um, I'm on this call by really happy coincidence Shortly after I retired, Dick Atia called me up and asked if I would serve on the executive board of the Emeriti Association. Um, and that led, as it has for many others on this call, to service as president of the association. I'm really grateful to Dick for what was an, uh, an easy, easier slide into retirement um, and an entree into a new group of friends and colleagues or the renewal of friendships uh, with people that I had worked with in other capacities on campus. Uh, many of you have mentioned, many of my people preceding me here have mentioned the range of things they did on campus. Provosts have their fingers in a lot of different pies. And so uh, I had the opportunity to meet people on many different committees and in many different roles. And it was nice to reconnect with everybody through the EA. For the last 10 years, in addition to serving at one point on the board, I've also been a mentor to Chancellor Scholars, and I am currently chair of the Emeriti Mentor Program. I need to keep the nomenclature clear. There is the Emeriti Mentor Program, and there is the Chancellor Scholars Program. I'm chair of the Emeriti Mentor Program, but I'll tell you about both pieces of the puzzle. Uh, while I was on the payroll of the university, I I really loved working with undergraduate students. Um, and so this Chancellor Scholars Program has been a very nice niche for me in retirement. 
have through the Chancellor Scholars Program, the Emeriti Association uh, serves and also helps to fund about 40 new students every year for a total of 160 students over four years, provided that those first year students maintain their eligibility in the next three years. Um, it's a bright, highly motivated group of students. The first year students are near the top of the admit pool uh, for the incoming class on the campus overall. They are awarded a scholarship based on their academic achievement as well as being first generation college students or graduates of a lower tier high school in the state of California uh, and uh, lower family lower family income, uh, high, high financial need, lower family income. So they're highly accomplished kids who are coming from um, backgrounds where they could use a little a little bit of support and encouragement on campus. So the Ameritai Mentor Program matches these students with an academic mentor who comes from the same discipline as their intended major or who has similar or related interests uh, in dance or music or some kind of community service or activity. Uh, and what we have found is that like in all big universities, UCSD offers a, a real maze of academic options, resources, and services. And these students, like many of us, sometimes need an informed guide to help wend their way through this maze of opportunities. In my view, the most important thing that mentors do is to help students feel seen and valued in what is a very large and often anonymous institution. But in addition, we may support them through tough changes or tough challenges like changes in their majors. Sometimes they have family challenges that we get to talk about and we get to celebrate when they have when they've taken our advice and chosen to do study abroad or internships or taken on research opportunities on campus. And we absolutely celebrate with them when they are accepted into graduate and professional programs, as many of our students are. Our expectation is that the mentoring relationship will be a strong one in the first and second year, and that by the third and fourth year, students will have identified faculty in their home departments to whom they can attach as new mentors. But many of our major, many of our mentors stay in relationships with these students all the way through to graduation and sometimes into graduate and professional schools and beyond. The mentor program is not just the relationship with students, it's a relationship among mentors. And so we have the option of participating as a group in bi-monthly meetings. One of those meetings has a guest speaker on any one of a range of topics related to what our students might be going through. And the other is a chance to simply visit and check in informally with one another. They are currently every other Monday, well, it's not quite every other Monday, it's the two Mondays a month uh, at noon. It used to be we met in the faculty club for lunch. Maybe we will be able to do that again next year. The other part of this puzzle is the Chancellor's Scholars Program, and it provides those same students with some supplemental experiences that build skills for a successful college experience. Students are assigned to peer mentors, and they also participate in weekly programs that are run jointly with the Center for Student Involvement and Leadership. And in those programs, the students can enhance their interpersonal and public speaking skills, and they, de they, they develop a really strong camaraderie among students who are in each cohort. Some of those programs bring students and mentors together, and that would include the highly enjoyed annual etiquette dinner, which hasn't been annual for the last two years, but hopefully will reinstate next year. Um, and some service projects such as beach cleanups. And there are also practice job interviews and speed networking. So I would just end by saying that it's, it, this is a really gratifying program. It's good to be able to support these promising students 
to meet young friends and keep a, a network of people with an age range in them rather than, than only our friends in retirement, and to have a continuing role in this student-centered portion of the university's mission. So I encourage any of you who are not in this program to look into it a little bit further. Thank you. And I think, Stephen, do you introduce the next person? I, I can or you can. Um... Go for it. Okay, well, thank you so much, Anne, um, and thank you for that uh, great overview of a really valuable program. And as I said, I've enjoyed participating tremendously over the last couple of years. I had to have my arm twisted to do it, but it's been a, a really uh, very rewarding uh, aspect of my retirement. Um, now, let's hear from another colleague this, uh, from the medical school, Professor Emeritus Roger Sprague, to tell us about the Emeritus Association Book Club. Thank you very much, Stephen. I came to UCSD in 1969 to complete my training in internal medicine and subsequently completed more training here in pulmonary and critical care medicine. And things were very nice from my point of view and not bad, I guess, from the institution. So I joined the faculty in 1976 and retired from full-time service in 2006 and joined the Emerita Association, I think quite, uh, quite soon after I retired. And my activities in the association have been in three areas. One is in the one that you just heard about uh, serving as a mentor. And I've been doing that for the past probably dozen years now. And it's been extremely rewarding. The only thing that I would add from to, to what Ann just said is that from, for somebody coming from the medical school, I had very, very little insight to what life was like for an undergraduate at UCSD. And it was both eye-opening and just very rewarding to establish relations with uh, undergraduates and, and both try to support them and just hear what their life was like and feel um, as if I had learned a good bit more about the university. I, I served on the executive committee as a member at large uh, early on and sometime around, I think 2013 or 14, there was a question of what other activities besides those that were in existence could the association be involved in and I suggested that a book club might be interesting. And as you all know, no good deed goes unpunished. And I was invited to uh, take that on as something that possibly could be organized and, and see what could happen. And it's been really very rewarding. The idea of people who got together to discuss this was to try to have a book club that included both men and women that discussed whatever anybody wanted to discuss, fiction or nonfiction. And we have some very soft guidelines for how the club would operate that are uh, not reviewed very, very often. I would say that the number of people participating uh, prior to pandemic was probably in the range of six to 15. We would meet in a small room at the faculty club for lunch once a month. And when uh, the pandemic came around, we changed to a Zoom meeting and that has increased participation a bit to uh, I think something in the high teens or low twenties, although anybody is invited from the Maritime Association to participate. One of our guidelines is that you don't have to have read the book. We started a uh, meeting in April of 2015. And so this is this week is our seventh year anniversary. And the books that have been discussed are really quite a wide range. And I can send the list to anybody who wants to contact me and is interested. But for example, in the last uh, few months, Steve Baird has led discussion of the great influenza, Barbara Parker of Heartland, a memoir of working hard and being broke in the richest country on earth. Jake Jacoby, A Discussion of Dangerous Medicine, Jack Fisher, A Brief History of Motion, 
Jake is going, Jacoby is going to lead discussion of winter is coming, why Vladimir Putin and the enemies of the free world must be stopped. Uh, that's coming up in May. There has been a little bit of an emphasis just because of members' interests on history, but we have uh, no limits on what can be done. And uh, one of the discussions, for example, led by a member from the Department of Literature was on the rhyme of the ancient mariner. My own other activity that's probably worth mentioning just in brief has been to represent the American Association on the UCSD Retirement Community Work Group. And as some of you may know, there has been a movement to establish a retirement community, a physical building uh, on camp, on the East Campus. And probably the only thing to say about that right now is that given the massive amount of development and construction that has been going on and is going on on campus, those efforts are currently on something of a hold. I can discuss that more with, with people offline if, if they're interested. So that's a brief report and I'll give it back to you, Steve. Thank you, Roger, uh, much appreciated. Um, and uh, last, but certainly, most certainly not least, uh, a very good friend and former colleague as director of admissions, um, AVC for enrollment, uh, for, I forget your actual title, May, when you were here, but basically she was my guru for admissions at UCSD, uh, and this year is president of the Retirement Association, May Brown. Thank you very much, Stephen, and, and uh, welcome. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be a part of this organization. I serve as an ex-officio member of the America because of my role as president of the Retirement Association. And, and I'll just briefly, briefly share um, that I started at UC San Diego in 1972 worked at several of the undergraduate colleges, and then moved into the retired as the assistant vice chancellor for enrollment management for the campus. I retired in 2016. Like Stephen, I, you know, I retired, joined the association quickly after retirement, and pretty soon, Suzanne allowed me to travel for a year, and since then, I have been actively engaged in a retirement association serving as both the vice president of the Retirement Association and for the last two years, the president of the Retirement Association. I'd like to just share a little bit about uh, the Retirement Association. And by the way, uh, uh, Emeriti uh, retired faculty, Emeriti also are part and can join and do participate in a number of the activities that are sponsored by the Retirement Association. We enjoy a wonderful collaborative uh, relationship with the American. We're really deeply appreciative of, uh, of that. Our organization is um, one of the largest in the UC system. We have roughly 2,400 members and, and uh, several major um, committees that are, that are a part of the work that's being done uh, on behalf of retire the Retirement Association, including we have significant efforts on the volunteer side. Many of our volunteers volunteer over 5,000 hours. Uh, we continue to do that work even during the pandemic uh, with uh, some of the organizations such as Toys and Tots and so forth. We have the, um, the uh, program committee and the program committee is tasked with organizing programs and activities uh, for the organization. And again, those, uh, a number of those activities are you, uh, the Ameritai participate in those as well. We have the membership committee and that is tasked with uh, attracting other retirees and others to the retirement association. We also conducted several virtual uh, coffees, uh, very similar to the one we're doing today on behalf of the Ameritai. Association. The uh, again, thanks to the incredible work of Suzanne and her team, the wonderful addition that we've added since 2020 has been our YouTube channel. Uh, we have had more than 19,000 views, 
organized more, and there are more than 120 videos that are featured on the YouTube channel. Really, we, as we listen to some of the presentations over the last two days, I think San Diego leads the entire system in terms of being very progressive and moving to YouTube and putting things online for our retirees. And actually, uh, what we have found is that many of our retirees, we are attracting more retirees via YouTube and our YouTube, uh, videos than we were in some of the on-campus activities. And I think as we move forward, we will need to think about how we conduct this work um, on a hybrid, in a hybrid form, because there are, as we age in place, there are many who will find doing YouTube uh, and doing it online to be much more uh, of a positive direction to take. So we still have that to work through. Um, as I said, uh, some of us serve as men mentee mentors for the Chancellor Scholars, and I too, having worked with students for long so long really enjoyed that interaction with students and uh, serving as a mentor has been one of the most rewarding things that I have done as well since leaving the undergraduate colleges. And so while as serving as the uh, AVC and director of admission, you had very little long-term uh, influence working with students, but serving as a mentor has really helped to rekindle that spirit and it's been a great, great, opportunities, something that I hope any of the new uh, America would consider participating in. Uh, so uh, that is what I'd like to share about the, uh, about the uh, Retirement Association. We hope to move into our new facilities uh, late summer and have grand opening in the fall. So on, again, on behalf of the Retirement the Retirement Association. I really appreciate the time and your time for listening and would like to turn it back over to Stephen. Thank you so much, May. And thank you to all of my colleagues for uh, your presentations. So we have about 15 minutes or so uh, for anybody else who would like to jump in with a question and observation. Um, if you can, uh, and we would be happy to entertain any and all comers. Raise your hand via the mechanism in Zoom or stick your hand up if you need to, uh, because it's, after two years, I still can't figure out how to quickly do the hand raise. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll take it on. So anybody? Yes. Um, Stephen, this is Harry. I would like to ask um, about the progress on the report of the Chancellor's Scholars. Um, I believe this was something that our dear friend Mark Applebaum was working on uh, before his untimely passing. But I do believe uh, you spoke about it uh, at one of our previous meetings, but I understand that you have something, uh, there's going to be a written report or possibly a book uh, later in the year. And I think this would be a wonderful thing. And um, I know I've, um, uh, bugged Suzanne in the past, um, and so perhaps you can um, you, you can help uh, help me uh, give us a little more information on this project. And I have another question after that. Anne or Suzanne, would either of you have any more information about that, Harry? I don't have an update, although I know things are in process uh, yeah. on this project that Mark started. Would somebody take this? Sure, I'll just jump in and it's Suzanne and I'll just say that we are in the process of identifying um, a, a, a project manager. I've got an awful lot on my plate as did um, Kim Sinue Par, the, the person I was working with. So we're going to be hiring somebody to sort of push it through the final steps with hopes of having something by fall. Fantastic, that's great um, because um, when you do have it, I know our colleagues in the Academic Senate in Riverside are very interested in what was done here and they'd like to learn from it. Um, yes. So that was something that I was remembering yesterday. Um, I, I have another very brief question. Um, it's for Roger. And um, I see uh, you have a space 
uh, for a presentation in August. And um, I'd be happy to present a book by Brian Moore, um, which is a really uh, one of those books that's very hard to put down uh, when you um, when you take it up. So um, I'm offering that. Thanks. That is a wonderful offer. However, Duncan Agnew has um, already nailed down August, so we'll have to discuss whether we might see if you're willing to present a little bit later in the year. Fine, no problem. Thank you. Thanks, Harry. Thank you, Roger. Uh, anyone else? May has her hand up. Oh, yes. Hi, May. Thank you. I just wanted to, I neglected, I wanted to say that I also, with, uh, with, uh, with Henry, participated in the, in the uh, Zoom meetings for Kusia and, and, and uh, Kusa. Kukra, Kukra. Kukra. I always try to think of how to pronounce that one. And I will agree that it was time well spent, very valuable information shared. And it's that during those meetings that I find out how progressive the campus is and moving forward. And so I, again, uh, I, I am delighted to serve in that role. And it's uh, just wonderful to see how progressive our campus continues to be. Thank you, May. Um, absolutely. Yes, Larry Brunton, please. Nice to see all of you. And thanks for doing this. Uh, I want to especially thank Roger. He does a wonderful job at running the book club. And I've so enjoyed uh, being able to join in from time to time, Roger. Thank you. I want to let all of you know that we'll be starting restarting the Leaden Luncheons. I'm, I've reserved the faculty club lounge for June 16th. We'll have our annual Bloomsday celebration of James Joyce's book, Ulysses. Uh, Harry Pohl will help me with that, I hope. Harry, you're still there? Yes, there you are. Yeah, I'm here and uh, I'm happy. As a matter so of fact- We'll, we'll have some uh, more word and I'll ask uh, Suzanne to extend the invitation to all the members of the Emeriti Association once we get the details nailed down. Uh, it'll be yeah. a campus-wide event for faculty and, and emeriti. So something to look forward to. And then I think by next fall, we'll get back on our regular monthly schedule for the Leaden Luncheons. Thank you, Larry. And I hope we get to talk to each other um, fairly soon. Uh, this is the hundredth year of the actual publication of Ulysses. Exactly. Um, and so, and there's also a new version of the book with illustrations that are done specially for Ulysses. Now, I'm not sure I like them that much, but um, <laughs> it's, it's worth discussing. Yeah, we, I, I also have gotten a copy of that, Harry. There's some pretty risque illustrations. It's oh, that, that quite titillating. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, keep it clean. Oh, um, sorry. That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Harry. Anybody Steven, else? I, I had a yes, question. Here. Yeah, I, I thought there were some interesting points to mention by May and Harry and some other people that had to do with uh, Zoom versus in meeting. And I wonder what people are hearing on that. I, I, I think there's some difficult issues. You know, people love to be meeting together, but we also have a lot of evidence that people also love the convenience of Zoom. And I wonder what people are learning about hybrid. And well, Peter, if I could address that again, this yeah. is Suzanne. We I, are that... already looking at a number of different um, software hardware packages, and right. we have identified what we think is the ultimate package that we will be purchasing two of these systems for our new retirement resource center locale once we get moved in in the summer. Yeah, we'll install one in the smaller conference room and one in the large conference room. And these systems will allow us to be completely hybrid, have an event where people, those people that want to show up in person can, and those people that want to be on board um, via Zoom will be able to follow along. So we're definitely looking at moving in that direction. That's interesting because also one of the implications of Zoom is that you can record Zoom. 
and that Zoom then becomes part of the library. I think one of the yep. points that was being made is that one of our great contributions is that as a system, we're building up a whole library of contributions, yep. we put it out there to system so that it becomes available to all kinds of people. In-person meetings don't get recorded and they don't therefore contribute to the building of a corpus of a big library. So these are, uh, and then if you're gonna use this, this double, this uh, multiple systems design that you're talking about, then people have to be aware of it. They have to think of it, they have to plot for it. So I think it's a really interesting bunch of problems for us to think about and consider. And I'm delighted that you're making progress in developing the hardware that allows us to do both at the same time. I think that's great. I can't claim that I've developed the hardware, but we have selected something that's very, very good. And uh, what, what it will allow us to do though, Peter, is you know, we'll, the, the Zoom part of it will still be you know, through this hardware, but on Zoom and therefore recorded because we realize the value of being able to put together this incredible um, library. I mean, to have 140 programs and where you can go and drill down and look according to playlist and really find exactly what you're looking for um, among all of our programs. Because as we grow in the year ahead and we're moving towards 200 and 300 programs, it becomes difficult to sift through to find really what you're looking for. So that's why we've really moved in the direction of having strong playlists so you can pursue your specific area of interest. If you want to see just the Emeriti programs, you can go to the Emeriti playlist and see those lectures. Um, you can see our archaeology playlist, our senior seminars. So we realize the value of that and any system we go forward with will have that Zoom and recorded element. That's all wonderful, yeah. Thank you, good, good question, Peter. Uh, and thank you, and thanks, Suzanne. Um, there are some people here uh, who might be newer to uh, our proceedings. Does anybody uh, in that uh, cohort have a question or comment uh, to make? Or if not, Stu, and I, I have a question, and it's kind of a naive one. I'm <laughs> surprised that I had never thought about uh, whether or not there are Chancellor Scholars programs on other campuses. And it was uh, Harry's reference to uh, Riverside's interest in ours that um, caused me to realize I just didn't know whether there were others like ours. Alan, there is not. We have the no. only Chancellor Scholars program in the entire UC system. Yeah. And have others shown interest or? or yes. A lot of interest, yes. Yes. Uh, in particular, uh, two people, George Miller at, uh, at, at uh, UC Irvine, uh, who's the chair of the Emeriti Association at Irvine, and I believe a professor of chemistry, and uh, Craig Behrens, also at, um, at UC Irvine. They've shown the most active interest, but I think they may have been hoping for a donation or something to help get them launched, uh, but it hasn't happened just yet. Uh, one of the people who spoke uh, yesterday was Hal Stern, uh, who's the provost um, at uh, um, UC Irvine. And uh, he was, he sounded like a person you could really work with. And um, so I'm going to touch base with them on that uh, question. But I, I think um, there was one of the reasons I asked the question of uh, Suzanne, because I remember how uh, Mark Applebaum had been very, he had gathered together data on the effectiveness of the Chancellor's uh, Scholars Program, which I thought was very, very valuable and very interesting. And so I, I, I look forward to uh, I know, Suzanne, you have a million things on your desk, but uh, I do look forward to when that comes uh, uh, into, into shape. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, we have a couple of questions. Uh, one from Tim Dresselhaus. Tim, go ahead, please. Hi. I just, I don't have a question, just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Tim Dresselhaus and uh, I was hired 
1992 for my career position by Roger Sprague and I retired in January and had actually submitted my application for an emeritus appointment in November as a priority. Um, it's still going through, I guess, the glacial processes of the uh, uh, university. But in any case, I talked with him further about the Emeritus Association and uh, look forward to getting involved. I know some of you from the School of Medicine uh, who have been my attendings early on and, and colleagues over the years. So appreciate the, uh, this really excellent introduction to the scope and range of interests uh, and activities in the association. Appreciate it. Terrific, Tim. Welcome. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing more of you. Thank you. Um, Helena Vitkevich. Helena, are you there? I see your hand is up. Um, maybe not. Un you're muted now. Uh, if you can unmute and try again. Okay, perhaps uh, a technical glitch there. Um, Helena? Okay, well, um, Helena, if you can hear us, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email either me or Suzanne, and we'll see if we can uh, answer your questions. Um, anybody else in the waning seconds? Suzanne, any final uh, comments? No, Jake had, had his hand up and then oh. he took it down. Did your question get answered, Jake? Hi, Jake. Sorry, I didn't see that. Actually, I didn't really have a question, but since my name had come up a couple times, I thought I would make just one or two comments. But I was looking at the time, and it looks like we were running out of time. I do want to thank Bernard for stepping in uh, on the awards committee. Um, it wasn't really a meant as punishment. It was really to avoid a conflict of interest. Um, my association with the Ameritai Association since I retired in 2010 has been uh, one of the outstanding activities of my retirement. I've truly really enjoyed um, all the aspects of it. And for anybody listening who is trying to, to uh, consider joining, I think it would be a major mistake not to because there's something uh, available uh, for most interests that actually exists in Emeriti from the University of California, San Diego. Uh, thank you again. Uh, as, a, as this year's concluding past president, I've truly enjoyed working with all the current board members and officers. And, uh, and I thank you all for the opportunities that have been given to me. Thanks again. Thank you, Jake. Um, your leadership has been stellar and much appreciated. Uh, and you were a great role model for me stepping in and taking the reins this year. So thank you. Uh, Suzanne, thank you. Thanks to all of my colleagues. Thanks to everybody who came uh, to this for the first time. Really looking forward to seeing all of you at various events. Perhaps some of you will be willing and interested in participating in leadership in the uh, executive committee. And um, have a good weekend, uh, take care. And uh, if you have any questions, again, don't, don't hesitate to contact me or Suzanne. Thank you very much, everybody.